Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be installing Ubuntu alongside our Windows installation on our actual hard drive. So you're going to need a few things for this. First, you're going to need a USB disk drive. I recommend 8 gigabytes or larger. Uh, and you also need a program called UNET Bootin. So to get that program, uh, open a web browser and type in UNET Bootin dot SourceForge. Net. And when you get to this page, download the Windows version. And I'm going to select open. Now, while this is downloading, uh, I want you to plug your USB disk drive in. And once it's in, right click on your start menu icon. Uh, this should be the same for every version of Windows since uh, Windows XP. Uh, when you right click it, you should get a menu and there should be disk management in that menu. So click on that and we're going to format our USB drive in order to be able to install the ISO image of Ubuntu on it, which we downloaded in the first video. So in the disk management screen, um, you're going to see a lot of things. Uh, actually, you're probably only going to see a few things because you haven't yet uh, done any formatting to your hard drive. So what you should see is a few smaller, a few smaller partitions at the beginning of your hard disk, and then a very large C drive, which should be uh, NTFS. That's your Windows partition. Um, Mine have already got some partitions here from previous Ubuntu installations. We're not going to worry about the disk zero right now because that's not what we're focusing on. First, we need to find our USB stick. Uh, you can usually find it by the size of the device. And right click on it and click Format. And you can name it anything you like. The important thing is that the file system must be FAT32 in order to boot off of the uh, USB stick. So make sure that's selected, uh, leave everything else, and I recommend checking this uh, perform a quick format, otherwise it's going to take a while. So leave that checked. Okay. Now it's going to format and it should happen pretty quickly. And then what we're going to do is once it's done, you actually need to unplug it. So remove it from your USB port. And then put it back in. And what this is going to do is it's going to mount it so that UNET Bootin can see it and so we can install on there. Now I got a notification here that said it's the F drive, so it's already selected. So I don't need to do anything here. I need to select disk image because that's we're going to specify the ISO image that we're going to burn to this USB disk drive. So hit this uh, button over here and browse to the file that you want to install. So mine is in downloads Ubuntu. And this is the same ISO image we downloaded in the first video. It's the same one that we installed on, in VirtualBox, and we're going to be using it now as well. So select it and hit Open. Now, if your drive is blank because you took the disk, uh, the USB disk out and then put it back in, all you have to do is toggle this over to hard disk and then back to USB drive. It should find it. You should have a list here. Make sure you choose the appropriate one and then hit OK. Now it's going to start the burning process onto the USB disk, and this is going to take a little bit. It should take five minutes or so. I will be back when mine has successfully burned. So when it completes, you should see this screen, and it's going to prompt you to reboot now or exit. Now it's important that you do one thing before you reboot your computer. Windows has a feature called Fast Startup. And that's going to interfere with your ability uh, to access the Windows drive. So we are going to need to repartition the Windows drive, so we need access to it from Ubuntu. Now, how Fast Startup works is basically when you shut down your computer, 
normally, your computer doesn't fully shut down. And so there's still things running, or, or at least a saved state. So it's like hibernation. So we need to change how that works. So what you're going to do is uh, right click on your battery icon and click power options. I'm going to go to change plan settings here. And then on the bottom, click change advanced power settings. And that's not where we need to go at all. Uh, sorry about that. Cancel it here. All right, here it is. So on the left hand side, ch uh, choose what the power button does and then change settings that are currently unavailable. And this will allow us to change the settings down here. Now this should be checked unless you've manually turned it off already. What you want to make sure is that this is unchecked and then hit save changes. So feel free to either reboot now or exit and then manually restart the computer.